Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be giving you my book review of Seasons of Albedon by Elon Marche and Christopher Warman. <laughs> If you want to go check out my interview with the authors, please go uh, find that in the cards up there. It was an awesome conversation and I had a great time talking to both of them. We're also going to show off this beautiful cover because it is absolutely stunning. Now this is a tiny little indie fantasy book. As you can see, it's not very long. I want to say it's only like 200 pages. I read this book in January. I took it along with me on e on my e-reader to a family Christmas and I needed something that I was able to potentially finish in a long weekend and so this one was an easy choice. I was expecting to really enjoy this book. I was not expecting to enjoy it as much as I did, and even more importantly, I was not expecting it to stay with me as much as it did. This book is formatted in kind of a unique way. It is a story that is separated into four different parts, each kind of sort of following a specific season throughout the year. All of these stories take place within a small area in the world of Seasons of Albedon, but each one of them follows a different protagonist. We're so used to getting multi-POV stories in fantasy, but this one really takes that to the next level and was perfectly executed in terms of how each story flowed into the next. But one of the things that Christopher mentioned when we were talking about these characters is that they kind of wanted to go into the stories of the NPCs of the world, the characters that kind of get left on the sidelines of a lot of other fantasy tales, and I think that that was executed perfectly. Each one of these characters is incredibly important to their story, but in the larger kind of scope of the world they reside in, not necessarily as much. And I actually found that to be something really endearing about this story, was that each of these characters was so just down to earth and relatable, and they were the people that oftentimes we don't get to hear the stories about, which I thought was really cool. The other thing that I want to mention about this is the tone, the general tone of this book. It is cozy adjacent, but also has flavor of very, very dark fantasy. Don't let this cover fool you. There is some definite dark flavor in this book. Some of it caught me completely off guard in the best way possible. I was not expecting several of the twists that happened throughout this story. It's hard for me to be surprised by books, and I always love when authors can surprise me in a way that feels authentic to the story. And uh, Elon and Christopher were definitely able to do that in this book multiple times. I absolutely loved how this story constantly had me guessing, the tension was there, but also it had so many wholesome messages through the book. I honestly still am at a kind of a loss as to how they pulled that off, but it was it's brilliant and I absolutely loved it. The four protagonists that we follow throughout this book are, first of all, a young woman who is aspiring to be an enchantress. She's apprenticed to an older healer enchantress that lives kind of on the edge of this uh, village. The second story follows a father who has, is struggling with alcoholism and he is trying to balance the dark rabbit hole of his addiction with a ailing daughter. The third story follows a foreman. He's kind of focused on bringing a new layer of industrialism to this small village in the forest where he lives. Um, and the final protagonist is a young mother um, with her newborn child kind of in the midst of a, tra a tragedy that happens during the rest of the story. It was really amazing because each of these protagonists' stories is so immersive and so magnetizing and it really didn't throw me off at all to weave from one story into the next. There were enough threads of familiarity in each one that it just kind of seamlessly moves through each of the four seasons and each of the four protagonists and we kind of build on each one as we move through the story. We get more and more world building and more and more bits of the village where all of these take place as we moved through the story toward the end. I'm very impressed when any fantasy author can have a really strong emotional impact on me through the books that they write, whether they're doing that in a book that is 900 pages 
or 100 pages or 500 pages, whatever kind of space um, the book takes up. Each of those has the opportunity to really leave a strong emotional impact. I am incredibly impressed that this book packs such a strong emotional impact into the tiny amount of space that it takes up. It really blew my mind, you guys. Like, this book, I'm still thinking about it. I'm still sitting here percolating on it two months after I've read it, and I love that. I love when books are able to do that. I realize that this review is kind of all over the place because I'm just giving you guys my unfiltered thoughts on it. So the other thing that I want to mention about this is kind of the tone, the uh, writing style, I guess, kind of fits into this as well. This book has very strong Studio Ghibli Miyazaki film vibes with kind of a grim fairy tale bent. And that is the best way that I know how to describe this. It has that dark whimsy of a lot of the kind of Grimm's fairy tales, but at the same time we're given characters who feel much more relatable and immersive, which in my opinion is once again a great example of taking that kind of classic fantasy that exists in those dark fairy tales and bringing it forward for a modern audience. Once I finished reading the ebook of this, I immediately went and ordered the hard copy because this was one that I absolutely wanted on my shelf. I know that there is a book two that takes place in the same world, but kind of a different character, different storyline. Um, once again, it sounds like it builds on Seasons of Albedon. And that is A Contract in Solforn, and that one I have not read yet, but I'm very excited to get to it. Elon and Christopher told me that this is going to be the first in a series of five books, and that is what they have planned so far for this world and the story that it's going to tell and everything kind of builds on it on each other. I'm very excited to read more of this because this was a stunning uh, book debut for the authors and it is honestly something that I think fantasy in general needs more of because I think sometimes we can get caught in the spectrum on one side of what fantasy can look like. And we think of epic fantasy or just fantasy in general as being these, you know, big massive book series or chonker books. And that's oftentimes, I think, what people immediately think of when they think of epic fantasy. And I love that Elon and Christopher challenged that with a different end of the spectrum that exists in fantasy and they pulled forward those those dark fairy tale themes and they packed a massive amount of fantasy punch into a very small book and I love it. Absolutely love it. So if this is not on your TBR yet, it should be because um, honestly is probably going to end up being one of my reads of the year, I would guess. I don't know. We'll see. Depends on what else I read this year, but this is definitely, up to this point, one of my favorite things I've read in 2023, and I can't recommend it highly enough, especially for those of you that are looking for something that might be a nice palate cleanser in between other series. It's so good. It's so good, you guys. There's there's great, wholesome, heartbreaking, heartrending messages in each of these stories. The characters are incredibly immersive and relatable, and I would highly recommend this, honestly, for pretty much any range of fantasy reader, because I think it's going to appeal to a lot of different styles of readers. I think it's going to appeal to a pretty wide range of subgenre enthusiasts because you've got a little bit of that dark, dark fantasy flavor. You've got the fairy tales. You've got that little edge of cozy and whimsical. There's so much packed into this little book, you guys. It's amazing. So anyways, that is my kind of unfiltered all over the place uh, review for Seasons of Albedon. I highly, highly recommend this book. If you don't already have it on your TBR, definitely go give it an ad and check out the interview that I did with Elon and Christopher about the book. It was a super fun conversation and they shared so much about their inspiration, their life of creativity together as a couple, and also a lot of great advice for writing in general, but also for co-authoring a book because they have that process down to an absolute like dream team streamlined process. That is my review for Seasons of Albedon and I hope you guys are having a great week. I hope you are having five star reads and I will see you in the next video.